Welcome to Opal STV. I'm in South Africa together with James Faircliffe and Richard Böttger. They are both from Tower Capital. Tower is a Johannesburg-based, long-short South African hedge fund. Now, James and Richard, tell me a bit of your history and how you set up Tower Capital. Okay, so Richard and myself both started our professional careers in private equity. We started investing together since 2001 and formulated our current company in 2008. Prior to that, I mean, we have been buying stocks since we were teenagers. So we are very passionate about markets. We've always been more passionate about them, hence our move out of private equity and into the listed space, which is what we're doing now. As James mentioned, we have been investing in the stock market since we were 13. So we've always been very passionate about the stock markets and about investing. We've been running our fund now for almost five years. We have 52 months of track record. We have an annualized return of 22% with a standard deviation of 7%. And we really do believe that our strategy is the right strategy for investing in Africa. Africa is the last bastion of frontier investing. Everybody seems to want a piece of it. It's very topical. And certainly our strategy provides a very liquid access point into the African success story or what is going to be an African success story. So our fund has monthly redemptions. 30-day subscriptions and redemptions. Uh, it is a very liquid strategy. We have a dollar fund, which is a Cayman Master Feeder fund. The usual suspects and best of breed service providers. And we are, have the ability to be long, liquid, mid-market companies. And obviously for the downside protection, given that we are an equity long short fund, we are short the very high beta um, big market capitalization stocks. I would just like to elaborate on the point that Richard mentioned about the low beta stocks that we have in our portfolio. We, we do specialize in this space and we have actually done a study on the low beta versus high beta performance against the indices over the long term. It stemmed out of a US-based paper we found about a year ago where they had studied global markets and the US markets. We then brought the same methodology onto the South African stock market and regressed for 10 years the lower beta quartile versus the higher beta quartile, and we found the same result. So we feel that strategically this gives us a long-term advantage by being long the lower beta stocks and typically short the higher beta stocks. Tell us more about how you construct your portfolios. We construct our portfolio out of four buckets. Given our private equity background, the, most of the work that we do is fundamental-based work. So we have fundamental long and fundamental short buckets. Then we have two trading related buckets. One is opportunistic and the other one is short hedge. So as I mentioned, most of the work we do do is in the fundamental space. This, is, this talks to the low beta stocks that we invest in. These are names we like. We invest in them for the long run. And we are quite active in trading those names. So exposure levels do range from maybe 12, 13% down to 5 or 6% over a month or two, depending on price action. Then if we look at the opportunistic bucket, typically these are stocks that we don't see fundamental opportunities, either from a long or a short side, but we don't want to exclude that portion of the market from our opportunity set. So typically this is tactical momentum type trading stocks, stocks we do like, and we're largely trading the technical picture. And then the short hedge bucket is largely to protect the overall portfolio. So that is exactly where the high beta shorts fit in. And if we look at our style, we are very much a concentrated portfolio, so typically the top five stocks constitute between 40 and 50 percent exposure. This is very much the way we believe if we do work on a company and we have high conviction in our hypothesis, then we do back ourselves. And typically these positions can start at 10 percent at cost. We can let them run up to 15, 16 percent. We have an individual stock limit of 20 percent. We have reached that close to that uh, size a few times, but typically our, our high conviction long trades range from 10 to 15 percent. Our strategy is very much thematic and we, as James mentioned, are mid-market specialists. What do those themes mean? Well, the African consumer theme is a very big theme at the moment. And as a result, and given that we are a concentrated fund, the themes can actually have quite a big portion of exposure in a particular theme. 
So how do we how do we risk manage and how do we mitigate against a, a certain risks given that we are a very high concentration thematic fund? Well, we are acutely aware of exactly what's happening in every single position in terms of liquidity perspective, as well as the fundamental research that James mentioned. Our theme that we're spending a lot of time at the moment is the Africa consumer theme. This does bring a big concentration and sector concentration risk. And obviously on a, on a daily and weekly basis, we're analyzing every single aspect of the portfolio, understanding where the risk what's happening, what's changing, and acting accordingly. You mentioned the African consumer story. Tell us more in particular, how are you getting exposure? How do you benefit from the African, from the pan-African consumer story? We have looked at all the African exchanges. They are relatively small at the moment. So our strategy, our style is to go through the JSE, on, obviously you get nice liquidity with these companies, and we look for those companies with good growth strategies into the African continent. Typically these industries have ranged from packaging to logistics. We recently are looking at the hotel sector, especially related to the business traveler, less so to the leisure side. And then obviously the banking sector, financial services into those markets are, are very under, under tapped at the moment. And there are a lot of our companies, especially given that the South African economy is sluggish at the moment, we're looking at 2% GDP growth. These teams are now looking north of South Africa to get some growth. And, and we agree with them. That is the best place to be at the moment. So, I mean, it's full of risks. It's, it's certainly not easy. A lot of companies have ventured off there in the past decade and haven't succeeded. So we really try and understand. We like the management teams that are cautious on it. You know, it's a great theme. It's a great story to sell but you've got to be very careful on how you allocate capital into those regions. It's very important that we understand which of these companies actually have a credible African strategy. It's exciting to see the degree of operating leverage. Essentially, when companies do get it right in Africa, all of a sudden there is a far higher profitability associated with these companies, given that there's just less competition and in many instances the companies uh, that are going into these frontier markets, the economies are dollarized. And this brings a whole level of uh, additional margin to the underlying profitability of these companies. It's the liquidity aspect that we are after. So we need to match the liquidity that we can offer our investors with the liquidity in our fund. And we believe that trading through these listed companies, these liquid listed companies on the JSE, we tap into the growth in sub-Saharan Africa while maintaining very liquid. Now, you already mentioned it. Investing in Africa, investing in South Africa does come with certain risks. How do you manage the risks in your fund? The most important aspect of any fund really is managing the downside. So one of our mentors in private equity always used to have a particular quote that we like to quote quite often, and that's, it's the downside that we need to worry about. The upside will take care of itself. So as James mentioned, we have a very concentrated portfolio and obviously we thematic and as a result of the themes, there are a number of concentrated bets that often override those individual themes. So it's important to understand what risks are pertaining to the particular names in the strategy. And these are, these are risks associated with payment terms and the like. So we are very adverse to investing in any sorts of names associated with government payment risk comes to mind is telecoms and resources. Where we would like to focus on is the consumer, themes associated with the consumer. consumer. Consumer aspects like retail, packaging, which is part of the greater consumer play, together with logistics, and obviously, most importantly, energy infrastructure. That's a big play in Africa at the moment. And we like to concentrate in terms of exactly how the companies that are operating in that environment what the particular payment terms are, and minimizing these risks associated with a risk that is fraught in Africa and that's anything to do with uh, repayment by any government institution and the like. And the most important aspect is that we have the ability to short. There are very low friction costs and there are very low costs of borrow. So exactly what a hedge fund should be doing is protecting on, on the downside. Obviously, that's what a hedge fund does do. Our strategy is very much long, low beta stocks and short, high beta stocks. And if we're always worrying about the downside and ensuring that we're acting like a hedge fund, what does that mean exactly? 
So it's important to understand that out of the periods of time since we've been running our fund, which is about 52 months, of those periods, 90% of the time when the Johannesburg Stock Exchange has been up, the Tower Fund has been up. But more importantly, two out of every three times that the Johannesburg Stock Exchange has been down, the Tower Fund has been up. And that's essentially what a hedge fund should be doing. It's capturing the upside as well as being able to ensure that we're protecting the alpha on the downside and actually making money more than just hedging ourselves on the downside. More specifically, our, our short side of the fund has two specific strategies. The first strategy is the fundamental short side that aims to make money in any kinds of markets. And then we have our short hedge bucket, which protects in, from overall macro elements and severe market drawdowns. Uh, and I think together, both those two strategies have protected our funds since inception. It was mentioned earlier that of the, the 17 down months we have, have experienced on the JSC since trading, we have actually been up 11 of those months. And that very much talks to our downside protection and our allocation of time and resources to making money in these two short strategies. Now, I know you have very strong views and practices when it comes to fund governance. Please tell us more about that. When we started the fund, James and I put the first seed capital in, and as such, we were 100% of the fund at that stage. We now have assets and strategy over $100 million. We have a team of 11 members, including James and myself, and every single team member is an investor in the fund. What does that mean? Well, sadly for anybody coming through the door, nobody is allowed to have any personal accounts anymore. If you want to have any exposure, and we encourage that highly, you have to invest in the fund on exactly the same terms as all investors. We see everything as a partnership. We partner up with our investors for the long term and we have exactly the same fee structure as all the investors in the fund. So you operate an onshore South African fund, but you also have an offshore version where offshore investors can participate. Tell us more about your offshore and your onshore fund. In July 2012, we set up our dollar class. It's a Cayman master fund with a Delaware feeder fund for the American investors. Both the RAND fund and the dollar, dollar fund are run on exactly the same manner. The only difference being the drag given the, the currency hedge. So we hedge 100% of the currency out for our investors. And given the interest rate differential currently at 5%, if we apply that to an average net exposure of 80%, which is what we hedge, we hedge the net, that implies a 4% cost to our dollar investors. The local fund service providers are Peregrine, KPMG and IDS. And then on the offshore fund, we have Citco and KPMG and then Goldman Sachs as our, our main prime broker. And we're currently in discussions with Morgan Stanley to be our secondary prime broker. We've seen significant demand for our strategy since we breached $100 million in, in assets under management. And importantly, we're focusing on one strategy. Additionally, South Africa and running a hedge fund through South Africa is the only mechanism in which one can attain the liquidity of uh, matching investors' redemptions together with the liquidity of the fund. So we believe it's the only jurisdiction in Africa where one can run a $500 million fund and have monthly redemptions. 